The liver is the largest solid internal organ and it has a lot of functions. Colon cancer is the third most common cancer. It is the first or the primary malignancy in the gastrointestinal tract and they don't just grow overnight. Probably because of their change in diet and lifestyle. What happens is we have acid and the acid goes up into our esophagus and it causes injury and pain. Many of us feel stomach pain every so often and digestion issues might be to blame. While they usually go away on their own, sometimes they can be a cause for concern. The good news is many of these gastrointestinal conditions can be prevented with healthy lifestyle choices. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez. Join me as we learn more about our digestive system, the possible problems that may occur, and the effective ways to prevent as well as treat them. Welcome to MedTalk Health Talk. The main role of the digestive system is to break down food and absorb nutrients. But what are symptoms of an unhealthy digestive system? And how can we prevent this? Our gastrointestinal system is responsible for breaking down what we eat and what we drink into energy that our body can use for growth, for energy and tissue repair. Now, to tell us more about this with us today is Dr. Luis Abola, who's a gastroenterologist from UERM Hospital. Now, first and foremost, let's first talk about our gastrointestinal system. For those who aren't so familiar with it, Saan ba nag-uumpisa ang gastrointestinal system natin? Saan ito nagtatapos? Okay, nag-uumpisa, it starts in our mouth, no? uh, where we chew. So it helps to break down the food. Kasi di man, we cannot swallow the food as a whole. No? So it helps to break down. Then the esophagus, yun ang daanan ng pagkain to the stomach, where it's exposed to acid, further digestion, then release to the small intestines. No? In the small intestines where you have most absorption already, as you mentioned, absorption is broken down into the simplest uh, molecule and absorbed, and then goes to the colon, the large intestines, where excess water now is reabsorbed. Parang our body is conserves everything. And then, of course, it ends up in our anus, and that is the extent. And there are accessory organs, so your, our liver, gallbladder, pancreas, that will help in digestion. Now let's start first with a very common pathology amongst Filipinos or what is deemed probably to be a problem for them and that is an ulcer. Maraming tao pag madalas sumakit ang tiyan, ang pinakinatatakutan nila, baka may ulcer ako do. Ano ba talaga ang ulcer? Paano ba ito nag-uumpisa? Ang ulcer is, uh, kasi ang stomach natin, secretes acid talaga. That's a normal physiology. It secretes acid for para sterilizing our food and digesting our food. Now, our stomach is protected against acid. May mucus layer yun. Pero minsan nasisira yung mucus layer, so the stomach uh, tissue is exposed to acid. Then, of course, our duodenum is not, does not have a mucus layer, na exposed to sa acid. Anong common cause? Well, of course, Helicobacter pylori, yung bacteria. Then, of course, also uh, the risk increases also if you take a lot of OTC na pain relievers, even aspirin. So, those are risk factors. Then, stress is part of it also. So those are the things that can occur. Another common symptoms which a lot of uh, Filipinos uh, undergo is yung pangangasim ng chan or yung sobrang production ng acid which can lead to maybe hyperacidity or even reflux. Ano ba talaga ang uh, reason kung bakit nangyayari ang reflux sa uh, dok at eventually ba magiging ulcer ba ang may reflux? Ang reflux, you notice nga among, among Asians tumataas ang incidence of reflux. One is probably because of their change in diet and lifestyle. Mm -hmm. What is, we have acid and the acid goes up into our esophagus and it causes injury and pain. What do I tell my patients? First is avoid taking heavy meals. Chew your food very well no? and probably not to talk while eating. When you're lying down, best to lie on your left side mm -hmm. rather than flat or elevate your head. Will it lead to ulcer? Uh, it's not really not may not lead to ulcer, but you may have concomitant ulcer and reflux. And of course, uh, if, if it persists, actually, pag uh, reflux, it causes injury to the esophagus, may risk factor for esophageal cancer. Meron bang distinct symptoms na pwedeng maramdaman ng isang tao na it should be already a sign 
that they should be have themselves checked with a with a gastroenterologist. Probably, if you're still young, uh, young is probably 40, less than 40. If you have once in a while symptoms of epigastric pain, masakit ang chan ng angasim, you can take yung antacids. Masama dyan if, if you take antacids at hindi gumagaling. Or you start having what we call red flags. No? You start vomiting, you start nauseated, you have difficulty of swallowing, it's really painful after eating. Then of course, if your stools turn black, that means you're some sort of bleeding. And if you're around 40 or 45, the first type of that symptom, see a doctor. Why? Your risk of developing cancer also is increased also at that age. Eh? So it's best that we do what we do endoscopy is, what I tell my patients, I do endoscopy to make sure that we are able to rule out a more serious illness. Speaking of serious illnesses, uh, Dr. Luis, one of the more serious ones is, you mentioned it a little bit, and that involves our colon or colon cancer. Who are at risk? What are some of the risk factors of developing colon cancer? And why is it so important to give awareness on colon cancer? Colon cancer, why, why is it important? It's because it has been shown that screening really decreases the morbidity and mortality of colon cancer. It's been already proven. Symptoms, of course, red flags would be bleeding, change in the appearance of your stools. You know, we call that pencil thin stools or goat stool like stools, pellety or if you have a sudden change in your bowel habit. From that day, regular cut, ups now you're constipated, or you have constant diarrhea. Of course, uh, abdominal pain, also uh, weight loss. Then age, no? Everyone over 50 to undergo at least colonoscopy to see if they have polyps. Kasi polyps are precursors, no? Natatanggal naman namin yung polyps and you decrease your risk. Now, are there any lifestyle things that people do that predispose themselves? Kumbaga, tumataas ang mga risk for developing colon cancer sa ginagawa ng mga tao every day. What I tell my patients is to increase your fiber intake. Because it has been proven in studies already that increased fiber intake will help decrease your risk of colon cancer. And of course, avoid or cut down on processed meat, red meat. Obesity is a risk factor for a lot of diseases. And one of these may be colon cancer, okay. even breast cancer. So definitely lifestyle can be a factor when it comes to gastrointestinal related diseases, especially for that for colon cancer. Our colon is one of the organs that make up our digestive tract. But what exactly does it do? And how can we best prevent conditions like colon cancer? More on this when we return. So stay with us here on MedTalk, Health Talk. think much of our colon but it plays an essential role in how our body uses the food that we eat so while eating healthy is good for our overall health adopting a certain diet can protect our colon and help in preventing conditions like colon cancer our colon health affects everything that we do now here to talk about the importance of us taking care of our colon we have dr carlo kahukum hello and welcome dr carlo yeah thank you freddy for this invitation colon is just part of uh, the rest of our gastrointestinal system you know? so it starts way up in our mouth all the way down to our colon and our rectum let's talk about the basics muna uh, what is the function of a healthy colon the colon actually is part as you said of the uh, gastrointestinal tract and it actually joins the small intestine and the anus so mm -hmm. that's why it's called the large intestines and mm -hmm. the function of which is to absorb mostly fluid water and essential nutrients as it produces or transforms and as we evacuate the product, which is the stool or the feces. It's really a process, part and parcel of our gastrointestinal system. Now, what are some common symptoms na may problema ang colon ng isang tao? Every symptom or signs could be uh, directed to bowel movement, mm -hmm. particularly the stool that is being formed, and not just the appearance, but also the function, how regular it is. Colon diseases can give us some symptoms of abdominal, gas pains, 
bloatedness, bleeding. So these are the things that we have to look out for. Now it's interesting, Dr. Carlo, that you mentioned that part of having a healthy colon is ang regular bowel movements. How often ang ang pagdudumi ng isang tao that's considered normal and healthy? It really depends. Uh, so it can be individualized. So there are even scoring systems mm -hmm. uh, whether you are constipated or not because it really depends on your food intake, your physical activity. If there are unusually long intervals accompanied by pain and bleeding, mm -hmm. so we have to be worried more. Now when it comes to cancer of the colon, Dr. Carlo, are there telltale signs? Are there risk factors that our viewers should watch out for? We discuss about the different uh, signs and symptoms uh, related to the colon and the tummy or the abdomen. But we have to take note that sometimes or most of the time, there are no symptoms at all. That's why it's really very dangerous to just miss out on uh, our colon. When it comes to colon cancer, bakit once na makita siya, once na mag-show siya ng symptoms, Dr. Carlo, not at an early stage but at uh, a later stage? Colon cancer starts off as a polyp, maliit na kuntil, mm -hmm. and it takes years for it to degenerate to malignancy o bago siya maging cancer. That's why we really go around the country and promote screening so as to detect it early because it can be prevented and it is treatable. Now you also mentioned, Dr. Carlo, that one of the characteristics, one of the symptoms of colon cancer in its early stages is that it has no symptoms at yeah. all. So can yeah. someone feel perfectly fine? Bowel movement is regular, I'm eating healthy, I'm exercising, but may possibility pa rin na meron akong colon cancer? Yes, there is. And that's what's really worrisome about colorectal cancer because sometimes there are really no symptoms at all. And that's why we need to assess our risks other than the risk factors. And that will be depending, one, in a familial or genetic predisposition. Meaning na mamana ito? Yes. Other risk factors will be poor lifestyle, meaning lack in physical activity, obesity, plus of course consumption of uh, red meat and low fiber intake. Okay. So these are some of the risk factors. The takeaway here, Dr. Carlo, is the sooner we know what you have, kung meron man, that is better. Apart from our colon, our liver is also greatly affected by our everyday lifestyle choices. When we return, we'll talk more about the liver and how we can care for it. Keep it here on Med Talk Health Talk. The liver is responsible for a number of functions in our body from processing the nutrients in our food to removing toxins from our blood. So when it's not functioning as it should, it can lead to certain conditions. When your liver is not working in tip-top shape, many problems can arise. But the question is, how would you know that your liver is functioning correctly? To help us find that out, we have with us today Dr. Edel Tripon, who's a hepatologist from the Liver Center at the Medical City. And she is the past president of the Hepatology Society of the Philippines. Hello and welcome, Dr. Edel. Thank you, Doc Freddy, for giving us liver people some time. Where is our liver located? Ano ba talagang function liver natin, Doctora? The liver is the largest solid internal organ. It's in the right upper part of your abdomen, and it has a lot of functions in our digestion, metabolism, prevention of bleeding, many, many functions. That's exactly right. So many functions. Actually, it's really a very important part of the body. Now, my next question is, what are the common problems regarding the liver that you see amongst Filipinos? The problems in the liver can be mild. Generally, it might be an abnormal liver ultrasound showing fatty liver. But at its worst, you can get cirrhosis or advanced scarring of the liver. And later on, these patients can also get liver tumors that are malignant or liver cancer. Okay, so fatty liver, cirrhosis, tumors, cancer. So it starts off with changes in the liver. Anong kadalasan, doktora, ang reason nito? What part of the lifestyle ng Filipinos ang nagkukos ng fatty liver? So fatty liver in general is broken down to two different causes. Non-alcoholic, 
So you can get fatty liver from intake of alcohol. And then non-alcoholic will usually come with conditions that increase body fat. So if you're overweight, hypertensive, diabetic, have high cholesterol or triglycerides, these are patients who are predisposed to fatty liver. Can a change in diet be significant enough to alter the state of the liver? Can someone's liver be healthy again by just a simple change in lifestyle? Yes, that's true. In fact, when a patient with fatty liver goes to us, the first part of the treatment will be losing weight through diet and exercise. So it's not giving medication, it's really a change in lifestyle first with the aim to lose weight. When it comes to symptoms, so a lot of our viewers may be curious, how do I know if I already am experiencing a fatty liver or if I already have cirrhosis for that matter? So unfortunately, the liver is a silent organ. It usually does not have symptoms until the disease is severe. So usually, a liver disease is picked up when suddenly you get an abnormal liver test, say an ALT or SGPT that's high in your blood chemistries, mm -hmm. an ultrasound that says you have fatty liver, and then that's how the disease is uh, picked up. I'd like to talk about hepatitis. Let's explain what hepatitis is, Dr. Uh, mainly, the concern in the Philippines is viral hepatitis. So viral meaning it's an infection. There are three kinds that are most common, A, B, and C. A is the one that you get from food, B and C is the one that you get from blood and body fluid. B and C is actually the more harmful ones because it leads to cirrhosis and cancer. Now when it comes to this, meron bang mga ways to prevent it? Meron bang vaccine na pwedeng uh, itake ang mga Filipino? A and B both have vaccines. The vaccine for B is free for all Filipinos under PhilHealth and the National Immunization Program. For A, for hepatitis A, you can get that from your doctor, and that prevents the hepatitis that you can get from eating street food, etc. Is there a certain age, doctora, where liver problems start to arise? There's no certain age because in the liver center, we see patients from pediatric to adult who have liver disease. But in terms of complicated liver disease, usually that's higher age 40 and up. Once you start going past that age, the chances of complications are higher. And now since liver problems are often silent, as you mentioned, it's also best to have it checked every now and then. Are there regular checkups uh, similar to like uh, a dentist where you have to visit them maybe once, twice a year? Meron din ba for the liver? Unfortunately, no. So even in annual exams, it's very common for patients to come to us with complications and they say, Doc, I have annual exams naman every year. Why wasn't this picked up? And it's because they don't get monitoring for the liver. Usually, it would be nice, especially if you have risk factors like you drink a lot, you have family history of liver disease or hepatitis, to get maybe a simple blood test for the liver, biochemistries, no? blood chem, and at least a liver ultrasound. Of course, there are more advanced diagnostics that we can also do to detect uh, liver disease. Remember, a healthy diet is key in keeping our digestive system functioning at its best. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez. Thank you for joining us here on MedTalk, Health Talk.